Hi everyone, my name is Gigi Minsky. I'm a UCSB senior studying biology in the College of Creative Studies with an emphasis in bioengineering. I'm here today to talk about a very special effort coming from the UCSB campus. This effort is a course entitled Civics During the Pandemic, led by art professor Jane Mulfinger. The course is really a self-organizing seminar for students from all disciplines and majors to come together based on their interests, whether it's medicine, um, mental health, arts and crafts, and figure out ways to remotely or in person give back during the pandemic. All in all, these efforts have been amazing to be a part of, and I really hope that this class continues even post-pandemic because it's just a great way to give back to society and work together. Thanks. It's just like a quick thing about um, know your rights. So um, a lot of people um, lost income in their jobs, and um, but rent is still due, unfortunately. So currently that they can defer their rent if they've been um, significantly impacted by COVID. And so there, we have reasons for our local county. People could defer rent as job loss, reduction of hours, need to miss work. And what is life like right now? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's really it's really different. Um, it feels um, just odd. I feel because I have all this free time, and uh, I know that there's a lot of people that um, are being like really adversely affected, and I have been super blessed to not have been yet. I feel like your generation is so I admire it so much. Um, because it seems like a collective thought of, you know, everybody needs to come together, everybody needs to work on things. And this was the case before this pandemic. So luckily, your generation was already kind of thinking in those terms. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, I'm really grateful that I get to work with, with, with you guys. Um, I'm an art major here at UCSB. I've been organizing weekly, sometimes twice a week, um, art classes. Uh, we just had our first one last week. Uh, we had a potato printing class. And then this weekend, we're going to be having uh, one girl, Tess, who also goes here, teach people how to make like Instagram mask filters. And on Sunday, we have another girl doing like a zine making class. The last month or so, we've been fostering animals from Santa Barbara, the Santa Barbara shelter, I think it's called. What I think is that this is day by day and that there are days where you are totally fine and you do things that you love and you take this time to do things that make you happy. I think that it's a roller coaster and some days will be better and some days will be awful. And I think it's about communicating with the people you're with and reaching out to your friends because chances are someone else is feeling the exact same way or they felt the same way a week ago, you know? So I think we can't control what's going to happen in the future. We have no idea what's gonna happen. We have no idea, like even the greatest scientists in the world, like we cannot predict where this is going, but we can keep up with each other. Just trying to find ways to make the world a better place, um, whatever way I can, even at home, just spreading good vibes to people, even if it's not just community service and just trying to make myself a better person since I have so much more time on my hands. Basically, I've been doing little projects where I either create videos or like infographics and really utilizing social media to get good information out there about food security and accessibility. Um, I'm hoping that the projects I'm doing now can be skills that students can continue carrying out. I think that's something that can carry throughout um, the rest of their lives. Well, I realized I can't go home. Uh, I feel isolated. I feel uh, lonely and I can't see my family and my friends in my own country. Uh, for this class, I have planned for making a game event that can gather all the people around and I've done to deliver the food to these people who don't have cars and drive them to markets. I've been working on mostly mental health building with a circle of friends, also some relatives. We have a weekly Zoom session between like 
just to share our feelings, to offer support with each other. But like we also engaged in a lot of political debates. Just the excitement that this pandemic will eventually pass, if you will call that excitement, I would say it's like a wishful thinking. <laughs> I think right now, like I think everything just feels like a little more stressful, but um, I think it's kind of nice to have stuff to be busy with just school wise um and i think most of my professors are doing as much as they can to make things feel normal That's i think all of our discussions so far have been centered around modeling the coronavirus and figuring out why it's so much more contagious and so much more of an issue than sars cov one um so we've been developing, so right now, just now, we're developing some models on infection rates and what the threshold for um, like the population immunity will be, like how many people will be infected for that threshold to be reached. Once I have graphs from that, um, I think it would be cool to show that and also compare it to other infectious diseases because I think it's really interesting to know I would like to think that once we're through the worst of it, things, w w we might just care about each other a little more, hopefully. It's for sure weird because it just feels like everything's the same. Me and my brother are working and doing our own thing. And then my parents got laid off. So it's just like, it's been a struggle. But Yeah, I've been just trying to help others with their mental health and just like, reach out to other people on social media, um, sending people resources that are going through a rough time right now, and then just bring groceries to like friends and family, that's it. It's gonna be different for a little while, but in the best way possible, and that it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be okay. I mean, I can't give an exact timeline as to when it will be starting to return back to what we knew as the normal, but I also think and I hope that stuff things are I know some things won't be learned by certain people but that a, a lot of some things will be learned by certain people and we can go forth and make changes for our planet and ourselves it's terrible for me right now I'm like I'm a Chinese international student and like I'm very homesick right now <laughs> I've been supporting local uh restaurants and stuff. like I've been ordering food from them I don't know if that counts but the thing is, I really don't cook, so every meal I order from a restaurant. <laughs> well, at this point, it's very unrecognizable, it's very unfathomable, because the coronavirus has changed the society a lot. Um, I really don't know like when it's going to be over, and there are a lot of uh, social problems that haven't been done. Um, ever since this started. Working on hosting a blood drive and last week I just finalized a date with, I'm working with Vitalant, which is a nonprofit organization that organizes blood drives. And we finalized it and I um, anticipated it to be really difficult to find a location to host it because obviously everything's closed, a lot of public facilities, you couldn't really have it on campus. Um, I was going to try to do it at a church, but you know, open up a church, but um, I ended up being able to do it at Salvation Army um, on Hollister Ave. So that's going to be June 24th. I mean, I'm applying to med school in a few years. And so I'm just kind of excited to get onto that process because I guess I've been like pre-med and everything. And it's all been just very like a distant thing. But now it's actually becoming really real, which is super exciting. And I'm just happy that I've like made it through all this. Also, I've been helping like a couple neighbors and some friends that I've known that are still quarantine set up gardens. Um, besides that, I've also been, there's like this, um, someone linked it in a Slack chat about this, um, like basically like citizen science project where you can help digitize a botany collection of plants. And so like I've been doing a, a couple like um, basically like just reading and like annotating like different notes down of plants so that it would be available for like on a digital library. Um, and, like, so I've been doing that like periodically on the weekends. 
Um, besides those two things, um, for me, it's something that like I kind of miss doing, um, which I use like is that I'm interested in like being like I'm a chemical engineering major. And so for me, like I love science. Like I, I want to be able to like present science in an intuitive manner to people because for some people, like science can come off as scary or like um, kind of just like uninteresting. So um, when I have, when like more, when school dies down, like pro basically after this week, I hope to like start working on creating an online educational resources based off of like high school curriculums. Um, and talk to some of my high school teachers about like making these resources available. Oh like hopefully I hope that people take a lot of lessons that they learn from this unique situation and like it helps improve our society in the long run. Like the hours just fly by and I don't know what's happening. It's, it's really interesting dynamic this class has really helped to provide this space of like thinking of how I can help um, communities or like even like for my future career. I'm, you know, like I'm a graduating senior and I don't really know what I want to do exactly, but I know it's in some form, it's going to be in some form of helping people. If someone was feeling anxious about the future, I would tell them take deep breaths, find three things um, in your surroundings that make that bring you joy you know the future will happen when it happens but we can't like all we can do right now is just like live in the moment and, and it's like really hard for myself to do it too and it's, it's not an easy practice life is it's faster than i thought uh, i've been trying to show masks whenever i can um just for people around me and then um, to the go to call it a cottage hospital. I had about 30 go to the hospital here and, and then I just sent out another 20 something to my mom. Um, she actually started having to use the cloth ones that I made because before I was making them kind of in advance and the time finally come where they ran out of N95 where she actually has to like so i make her the cloth ones with like a little pocket so you can she can like put more things to suffocate herself with <laughs> so she would wear like her surgical mask and then she would wear the one that i made with like a piece of paper towel in it and then she would go to work with that so then once she started wearing it her coworkers are like where did you get that so then um in quarantine there's a lot of time for like self-isolation and like really being alone with your thoughts and the first few weeks were pretty tough for me. Um, I just, you know, struggled with not being able to go outside and um, not being able to, you know, socialize with everyone and have something going on constantly. And I started thinking to myself, like, there's, th there has to be more than something like this. It has to be like, I have to be able to, there has to be a way I could um, make the most out of this, you know, time I have to myself. And so I started to really get into self-improvement and um now i find myself working out a lot um i've been cooking and baking and like i've been doing yoga a lot and like meditating and i've just seen myself really just take a whole like 180 in terms of my life and right now i'm doing um instacart which is an online app that delivers groceries to people this whole pandemic really seems like it's gonna really shape the future in a different way I mean, we've been, like, the world has been through terrible, countless of terrible um, pandemics before, and we're still, as a human race, we're still, you know, advancing, we're still here, so, um, yeah, it's scary in the moment, but definitely, you know, we're going to get through it, and we're going to do it together. It's, for me right now, it's really, like, maintaining relationships, community building, staying in touch with who I can stay in touch with. I just joined, actually very recently as of a week, I just joined this club called Eco Vista. Um, and I'm gonna be working for their magazine. So it's an it's a you know eco-friendly, eco-conscious magazine that talks about a lot of the 
ecological issues and stories and problems that we face here in Isla Vista, um, especially during the times of the coronavirus. Yeah, it's more, I think, when I think about results, I always think about like these tangible external things. But for me right now, it seems to be more of an internal satisfaction and this, you know, inner peace and that I have found in this time that's so turbulent and so difficult to find peace and stability in. Um, for me, it's really just, you know, obviously we can't continue with life as it always has been. So by doing these activities and engaging in these civic projects, I've really been able to find some zen. I would say it's just been a lot of adjusting and trying to figure out how to care for myself like emotionally physically like mentally during this time that's like the main thing like when we first went into quarantine because i have roommates and it's all of our senior year so we were getting ready to graduate i know like we first were trying to like have fun like literally the first like two weeks and then it got very old and it was not fun at all at one point so I feel like now I just try to take away time like in the morning, like I will meditate and also like reading is really helpful. Reading stuff other than my um like school material. I've also been like FaceTiming my friends from back home. We've been doing kind of like exercise challenges and stuff like that with each other. So those are pretty much like the main thing. All like it's just going to be like a lot of getting used to. And I honestly don't know what to expect. I just kind of want to be like willing to adjust. So like for my family, I've been kind of going grocery shopping for them because my both my parents like work still, so they don't have the time to go like grocery shopping. And like my grandparents, since they're like at higher risk, um, I've been going grocery shopping for them as well. Um, and they live in like downtown LA, so like I kind of like drive over there. A really close friend, a family friend of mine actually like runs like a tutoring academy, so she is um, really struggling because I guess she's like the only one kind of overseeing everything with all the students that she has. So um, yeah, I'm trying to help her out. I've always been someone that has been super anxious about my future, and like I often think about my future more than I think about the present. Although it's, like, inevitable about, like, worrying and being anxious about, like, the future, like, I feel like nothing good comes from, like, dwelling on that and, like, focusing and putting all your energy about that anxiety and rather focusing on, like, what you can do to better, like, the right now kind of thing. This has become a family project. It's mostly me and I have two younger siblings. We've been able to print probably, like, 300 at this point. So ear savers are basically little hooks that help take the pressure of ear masks off your ears. In general, if we're focusing on disease, disease has always been a part of humanity. It's helped shape us and build us from the very beginning. And so even though right now this is something that's kind of new to us, it's not something that humanity as a whole hasn't dealt with and will always continue to grow as a body of people and in adverse times, we'll find ways to overcome. Well, for this class, I've been trying to find creative and innovative ideas to help out during this time, which I guess the best thing everyone can do right now is just stay home. But with that comes a lot of free time and a lot of worry about the communities around us, especially those who are more vulnerable and susceptible to um, the disadvantages that they already face in society. Hmm. Well, some uplifting things that we've been doing in our community is like making signs for our local businesses and I and hanging them up on the restaurants or whatever shops that that. Sorry, the puppy's running away. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been making some signs for that. Um, and I've been working on some thank you letters to service workers. I want to send them to the hospitals. If you just worry about the future, you're going to miss out on the moment. I joined this class in the hopes of connecting more with the UCSB community. And it was really amazing to find a group of students who were dedicated to 
doing civic good in this time where it can be really hard to focus on people other than yourself and work on improving situations other than your own. I worked on a few projects for this class. My first was uh, more artistic. I worked on collecting works of writing and poetry that I thought applied to the sort of social consciousness at this time. Um, and I did some illustrations for them and compiled that. And then I also started to work in voter accessibility. So I created a poster encouraging people to register to vote by mail. And then California later passed a policy making sure that every registered voter is gonna have a vote by mail ballot, which was really exciting. Um, and because of that work, I got involved with an organization called Vote Forward. So I spent a few hours every week writing letters to people who are registered to vote, but haven't voted in the past few elections. During civics in the time of pandemic, I have um, created a fundraiser to assist veterans uh, for the hardships that come due to the circumstances of pandemic. Um, they have housing crisis, food crisis, clothing crisis, everything crisis, and um, of course, social crisis. And so um, I put together a fundraiser where we could get money out to the VFW riders, the American Legion, and VA clothing. And so it was during this class that I put the fundraiser together, initiated it, and um, posted it basically published it. And so to this date, I believe we're now at $1,000 that's in the mailbox at American Legion Post 817 in Panorama City. So my grandfather passed away in 2012. And at that point, I had received a message, which was basically his message, which was to return back to school. So that I did. And um, it's been working out. Everything's kind of now coming to me that didn't come to me in the past in bills. The thing that I've mainly been doing is trying to like provide for kids that are stuck at home. So I've been dressing up as different princesses since like that that's what I can do at home and going on live and stuff and they can interact and ask me questions. They answer their questions, give them birthday shout outs because a lot of them are having birthdays here. Um, I did a drive-by birthday um, where I dressed up as Moana and waved out the car. The future looks like it's going to change, but I feel like during these times, a lot of students like this class, people have been really resourceful and trying to help out where they can. So I really think this time alone has really strengthened people's minds and bodies and spirits, and they're able to really put forth effort into something that's meaningful because we have so much time now. So I think in the future, people will be able to soak in the moment and really think through their steps and what they're doing and be more impactful. I'm going to be, I'm actually not performing. I'm going to be premiering my composition uh, called Echoing Dreams on June 2nd. And this piece is a piano quintet. Um, actually, my sister's practicing her, her piece right now, um, so currently I have a Bach piece in my head. Excellent. That was great. <laughs> I don't think I play that, piano. <laughs> that was great. Uh, personally, music plays a huge role in this time during the pandemic. I think, I think specifically that during this time we should be looking for new ways to reach out to people and figure out how to connect with people in a way that we're not used to. I've spent my time um, helping with AS elections um, now that it's gone remote and then um, apart from that, I've also worked with the Global Gaucho Commission to um, create a survey that would best help support uh, the international student community. I think, well, I just want to say that I feel like the work that I've seen, like, our classmates do and everything and, like, all the, uh, like, projects that people were working on. I know I helped with the Spanish translation for the student who was doing um, the voter, like, vote by mail uh, project. and so. I'm um, just seeing all of the initiatives that the students have been doing. I feel like it's just 
really cool and just knowing that people's minds are just always working and like always interested in like getting involved with the community and so um, I don't know I think I've just been more inspired to continue like working hard and trying to you know 